Because we have to understand that the first, the very first, according to the plan of God, the very first solid defense against the evil one will always be the family. And we see that with Jesus himself. As he was growing up in wisdom and grace, it was the family that protected him, that nurtured him. We see that it was there that he grew in wisdom and grace and was able to go out and, of course, go and fulfill his mission. St. John Paul II tells us, when the family goes, society goes. And if you look at society today, we can, uh, around the world, and how disturbed and, we may say, uh, there are so many dysfunctional family, uh, societies, we can basically see what the state of families in the church, in the world, is today. And that is something that is quite sad. I always give these examples uh, to, to be able to discern whether a family is under attack by the evil one. Because remember, we're not dealing with a sickness which is benign. Okay? I can pray over a person for healing, and uh, the person can get healed. Okay? But when you're dealing with an evil spirit, he is a person with an intelligence and a free will that is more powerful than man. You're encountering really some an entity that, is, that has been bred for combat to destroy souls. And therefore, usually in the home, they will not keep it in peace. Usually the way they enter a home is always deceptively. They will not, in the beginning, they will always come in a very deceptive manner. But once they are confronted, then they become the red dragon. They become very hostile, very violent. And these are some of the indicators that manifest when a home has been infiltrated. Uh, when I do exorcisms of infested homes, I usually see this, for example, generations of sin and bad luck. I already said that there's no such thing as bad luck or good luck because everything is under divine providence. Everything is under the infinite intelligence of the Lord. Nothing is outside of that. And therefore, everything that occurs falls under divine providence. And therefore, when a family seems to be miserable, filled with so many uh, a lot of sin and misery, that means they are under attack. And the devil will never want to show that he is behind that. Why? So that the family itself becomes either atheist, they, become, they all become atheist, or they don't believe that God is a loving God. And not only that, those who continue to believe in God start to blame him for all their miseries, not knowing that they are actually under attack, that their homes are not that protected. And also, there are families, even though they do their best, there seems to be a block to God's blessings. The relational, emotional, psychological, physical, uh, financial blessings don't seem to come in. And therefore, the family experiences misery. Usually, we experience that there are blockages that are placed there by the evil one, either to curses or maybe objects that have entered into the home that have been cursed or are infested or we see a lot of homes with paranormal phenomena okay? so that it's also a sign that this home is haunted that it is infested by an evil spirit especially when there is a lot of fear poltergeist activity you're not dealing with a soul you're dealing with a diabolical spirit okay? souls from purgatory only come back for prayers and uh, for consolation of the living but never to harass or to cause fear or you know, to, to tamper with anything in the environment, things that are nonsensical. Also, when we discover intense anger, sadness, and fears, for example, a family moves into a home, suddenly they experience all this emotional turmoil uh, without any re real reason. While when they move to another place, they feel peace. That means this home is also infested. And also difficulties and problems beyond the human condition. There are some families experiencing, uh, we may say, so heavy difficulties that it is, it is, it is not the cross. It is not like life-giving. It doesn't give them peace or joy. It causes a lot of misery and sin. And we see that this is actually a sign that the family is under attack. That this is a cross the Lord doesn't desire the family to carry. It is the cross that, is, that the Lord desires that spiritual warfare should come in and expel that spirit that is causing these di this difficulties. So we have to create a sacred atmosphere in these havens of refuge, especially for the most innocent and vulnerable. 
not only as some form of castle for protection, but most especially that it becomes a school of virtue and prayer, a school of the gospel. So we are not simply hiding ourselves and protecting ourselves. It is within this castle that we form future warriors, future saints of the church. It is a school for saints. Okay? And therefore, when it's like a seminary, once a seminarian is formed, then he's sent back to the world. He comes from the world, and he, he is trained separate from the world, and as he returns back to the world, he is not anymore of the world. Okay? Therefore, he is able to bring the gospel values in the, to the world. He is not anymore supposedly infected by the worldly values, the worldly spirit. He is prepared for spiritual combat. So that is how homes should be.